It was a tough one in Columbus, but thankfully the road gets a little le- – uh, now actually gets really downhill for the Nittany Lions here. <laughs> My road just goes right to the fridge. I'm looking for more Thanksgiving leftovers. Yeah, and there's no truth to the rumor that there was an injury at the Jones Thanksgiving with the turkey leg for Steve Jones. No, he's calling Penn State basketball. We ask that you climb with us for this blue-white tailgate. Welcome into the blue tailgate. Yes, uh, blue white tailgate. Yes, no, no truth to the rumor about the turkey legs, but there's truth to the rumor about gravy on your pants. So you had to wear these today. Well, you know what? Hunting season is upon us for the deer <laughs> season. So just a reminder to wear orange and a little, little Thanksgiving color today. Absolutely. All right, a lot to get to, but look, it, it, we, we found out was it was a special Ohio State team and a really gritty, gutty. Penn State team, Josh. Yeah, I mean, Penn State played well. You know, losing your starting quarterback in the middle of a game down 21 nothing might break a lot of teams. Penn State came right back and fought, but at the end of the day, Ohio State's showing why they're just recently voted the number one team in the country. Absolutely. We'll talk more about the Buckeyes. We're going to get to the Scarlet Knights, but first we want to talk about Antonio Shelton and how the talent equated on the field in Columbus. They have great athletes, great football players, and so do we. Um, you know, it's just they made plays when they needed to and sometimes we didn't make plays and we needed to but yeah I, d- I felt like we uh, we definitely matched up well so the Lions showed a lot of heart in this one Jay uh, they come up short it really says a lot about the Buckeyes that they won the turnover game and still won the game by double digits no question I mean the, the ball bounced Penn State's way Penn State made some plays the things that Penn State needed to have happened to win the game happened and Ohio State still won by 11 which tells you how good Ohio State is and they may be pulling away from the rest of this conference all right, so we got one, two, three here. Uh, there's a fourth member of the team this week, and we go to our PCB, PSECU update desk, and let's go to Brittany Weir. Since Penn State's 28-17 loss last week against Ohio State, they have dropped out of the top 10 rankings in all three polls. This is the lowest that the Lions have been ranked since week two. It was recently announced that Justin Shorter has put his name in the transfer portal. The former five-star recruit has 12 receptions for 137 yards. But switching over to some positive news, Michael Parsons was named a semifinalist for the Walter Camp Award and a finalist for the Butkus Award. He is the first PSU linebacker to be a finalist since Dan Connor in 2007. Now let's take a look at some lines in the league, starting with Mike Gusecki, who scored his first career touchdown in the Dolphins' loss against the Browns. And Chris Godwin had a huge game on Sunday for the Buccaneers with seven receptions for a career high of 184 yards and two touchdowns. He is currently ranked second in the NFL for receiving yards. And just a reminder for Saturday's game, make sure to get in your seats early because Penn State will be honoring its 16 seniors. The senior class has compiled a record of 40-11 and and with a win on Saturday, they'll tie the 1997 class's 41 wins. All right, thanks, Brittany. Let's get to our Bobby Rahal drive of the game. Jay mentioned this one almost got out of hand. It was 21 to nothing, and the Nittany Lions really needed a spark, and they got it in the third quarter as Will Levis enters the game. Nine plays, 75 yards. There you see the play for Sean Clifford. He bobbles it. He's on it. I think the guy can dribble a football, by the way, guys. This has happened twice <laughs> where he was able impressive. to complete the pass. But here comes Levis, Jay, and to provide that spark with some really tough straight-ahead running. Well, I think it changed it in terms of Ohio State what they were looking at defensively, and it was a lot of north-south quarterback run games, and for a couple of series really gave them problems, but they looked like they made some adjustments, but this drive was huge. Yeah, Josh, I think it really sparked Journey Brown as well. I haven't seen him run straight ahead that hard in a long time. That was really an impressive run by Journey Brown. It did, but I think the biggest part of this drive for Penn State is what it led to. It led to all of the other scores for Penn State. It was drive, turnover, and then another drive for a touchdown, turnover, then a drive that ended up being a field goal because of a false start penalty and a big sack from the Ohio State defensive line. Yeah, this game was close to being tied up at 21 all. Okay, so a couple of guys shined in this one. We mentioned the spark that Will Levis gave. So he is our Planet Fitness Offensive Player of the Week. Will Levis coming in as the backup quarterback. He looked healthy. He looked tough 
running, and he did a decent job throwing the ball as well. Six of 11, 57 yards, 19 attempts, and 61 yards for the touchdown. That one with Fryermuth probably could have been reviewed. He was pretty close to getting over the line, but look at Levis finish the job there, Jay. No question. Again, like I said, that north-south element he brings to the run game really gave Ohio State's sideline to sideline speed defensive problems. And again, it's going to create some situations now in the future where yeah. Clifford's got to be on his stuff because Will Levis is a viable option. He's there and ready to go. Okay, who else was ready to go? Well, that was Lamont Wade, our Planet Fitness Defensive Player of the Week. And he didn't force just one fumble. He didn't force just two fumbles. This guy forced three fumbles and recovered one. As Micah Parsons forces that one, there's a scramble for the ball, and Lamont Wade comes up with it and celebrates on the sidelines. Ten tackles as well and involved in a sack. So he is our defensive player of the week. So you could say that Wade and Levis really fueled the rally. We mentioned it almost got to 21-21 all. And so where does it stand now? We're 9-2. and two. Bowl updates, bowl projections. Where could these guys still go? Because it looks like they're going to get that 10th win against Rutgers. The, uh, we're looking at maybe the Rose. We're maybe looking at the Cotton. And some have said the Outback Bowl. Have even mentioned the Orange Bowl in consideration. Look, these are all nice places to go, guys. Yeah, things would have to go pretty well for Penn State for them to end up getting the Rose Bowl. But still, these are solid, solid po possible landing spots with against some really good opponents. Yeah, and, and look, the reality is, is there is so much football to be played. <laughs> you know, Oregon, everybody talked about Oregon last week, and I watched that game in the end, but yep. we'll see. Yep, it's a good thing. They're, they're one of the higher-ranked two-loss programs, so they're going to get a bowl game no matter what. We're back to talk about the Scarlet Knights after this. We're back on the Blue White Tailgate. It's going to be a special day at Beaver Stadium on Saturday as it is Senior Day. It's going to be emotional. And Cam Brown, well, he's not ready to say goodbye, but he knows it's the right time. Honestly, it's going to be it's going to be memorable. It's it's the last time in front of 100,000 people. It's going to be last time at Beaver Stadium, last time with this team. And it's a group of guys that I came to love. They came to love. I've been loving them since I got here. Just as brothers, I've accepted everybody. And I mean, it's going to be emotional. I mean, after the game, of course, but before that, I'm just going to have to learn to contain my emotions and, and play and focus on the game. Oh, really well said. I mean, there's a football game to be played after you experience that, Jay. And I mean, to see these guys, look, the college years are really transitional years in your life. And they're saying goodbye to a lot of people that they've spent a lot of time and seen a lot of changes in front of. Yeah. And you know, when you're 22 years old, four years seems like an eternity. And these guys feel like this has been their home for four years. So, yeah, it's, it, and you know what? It was one of those games that once it starts, the emotions start to wane. But then as soon as it ends, they, these guys will be balling like babies. Oh, I remember last year seeing Trace and Amani and all them taking that whole lap around the stadium. Very, very emotional. And I can't imagine it's going to be too much different for this group. And, you know, you come out, you see your, your friends and your teammates there. Then you come out, you see Coach, and then you go right to your family. So yeah. it's kind of like that triple hit, right? That's why we never, we never had family on the field, because we didn't want that. <laughs> so I don't want the mothers down the field. They're going to make, it sad, make these guys sad. We've got to go play some football. So, so, so after they see their family, yeah. they're going to see Rutgers. And so what are they going to see when they see Rutgers? Rutgers and the opposing coach. Well, he's he's an interim guy. It is as we go to the McClanahan's coaches file. We don't know much about Nunzio Campanelli, including the correct pronunciation of Nunzio Campanelli. But uh, he's had it, the gig since late September. Um, it's surprising they haven't filled the position. I will say Don Bosco, the offensive coordinator at that high school, that is well known. And so and Bergen guy, Catholic. Yes, too. I mean these Great guys got some credentials as far as that goes. Uh, not a lot of the bodies, though, that, that he needs to get the job done. And so when you talk about Rutgers and the coaching situation, the name that keeps popping up is Greg Schiano. Were they going to get it done? Are they going to get it done? Because they want it to be done on the outside. But so far, nothing. Look, Rutgers got to make a decision. Are you going to be in the Big Ten all in? And, and part of this is the Big Ten's fault. Because the Big Ten, when they brought Maryland to Rutgers and didn't give them the full share of the, of the TV money, and you really put them in a, in a bad situation, and they got to rectify that. Tail of the tape. GoPSURV.com, our friends at GoPSURV.com, and there is the tail of the tape coming up. We're going to talk about Rutgers' defense, matched up against Penn State's offense. What jumps off the page to you, Josh? 
Well, that big asterisk at the bottom of the graphic there, the last in the Big Ten in points and rushing yards. And Penn State, they have struggled a little bit rushing, but Noah Kane's probably going to be back healthy. Journey Brown's been tearing it up the last couple of weeks, so that rushing offense could be key against Rutgers. And they've struggled. They averaged 3.6 yards a carry against the Scarlet Knights last season, but I think they've got the talent to make that an asset this week. So the other part of it is Will Levis and how much he's going to play. We've made mention of this, Jay, and, and a lot of it's going to have to do with the health of Sean Clifford, what he can do. But you want to see him come out and throw the ball. And Levis, you know, they're going to have to, if he's going to play, he's going to have to throw the ball to be successful. No so. question. And I think, you know, one of the things that jumped out at you Saturday was there was a couple of throws he made that were lasers. He's got a big-time arm, no question about it. Now James Franklin has some comments on whether or not Will Levis will play and how much. Let's hear what he has to say really could see a situation where Will plays this week. Now, how much he plays, I, I'm not sure. Um, but I could see us, you know, playing Will this week. Um, and Will's going to have to get, you know, a little bit more reps in practice just because, you know, Sean's not ready to take the normal amount of reps that he normally would. Josh, you mentioned that running game. So the offensive line is going to be a big factor in this one, too. This is their opportunity to shine, isn't it? Always is. And I think they've been improving. They were on the midseason watch list for the Moore Award. There's some talent there, and as with any offense, you really need the guys blocking up front to make things happen. So let's take a look at the tail of the tape on the other end, the gopsurv.com tail of the tape as we look at Penn State's defense against Rutgers offense. Uh, Jay, what do you see on there? And talk about the quarterbacks possibly getting Langan and, and then Pacheco, Isaiah Pacheco, and stop their running game. I think they've been very consistent throwing the football. They're going to have to find some ways to do that because I don't think you'll be able to run the ball. But Langan can run. There's no question. So Bell Mel Bo Melton is a name that people are going to have to keep in mind, too. That's a talent that uh, Garrett Taylor is impressed with. He's got some skills. Uh, other than that, I'm not so sure Josh at Rutgers poses much of a threat. I mean, there's just not a lot of guys that really jump off the page. I mean, their leading receiver is Raheem, Raheem Blackshear, and he's been out since week four. So it's, it's really tough to find playmakers on the Rutgers offense. Absolutely. they got some guys in the transfer portal as well that they could use. All right, so next up we go into the film room with Jay Paterno when Blue White Tailgate returns. So we had to get up, stretch our legs a little bit. So we came into the film room with Jay Paterno. It is all brought to you by Beer Bellies Beverage. And when you look at this week's opponent as opposed to last week's opponent, boy, I'm sure you see some stark differences between Rutgers and Ohio State. But you still see some things that Penn State needs to address no when, when you face the Scarlet Knights. So what jumped out off the page at you when you when you well dissected this matchup. <laughs> not a lot jumped out on you. More of a warning that, you know, it's not always mm -hmm. as easy as you think. And let's take a look, first of all, at Rutgers and their defense. Because the last two years, Penn State looked like they were going to roll over them. And look, they, they're going to commit to stopping the run. If you look at the last two years, and you're dealing with Saquon Barkley two years ago and Miles Sanders last year, and not able to really run the ball effectively. And Rutgers is going to try and probably do that again on Saturday. And let's just take a look at how they're going to play their defense. Again, much like Ohio State without the same kind of talent level, safety is deep. And, you know, this safety is going to be in the next area code. He's that deep. The tight end should be a factor. Hamler should be a factor on the slot matchup while these guys try and take away the run game. Let's take a look at what they did against Ohio State. Again, Ohio State, very talented. They're not, you know, Rutgers is going to play the way they play it. They're going to try and get up the field and make the run game difficult. And they did that for a little bit against Ohio State and some other teams. But, again, the last place run defense in the Big Ten should not be a problem for Penn State. They've got to handle that and run the football. Now, when you take a look at what they want to do, they'll also get into a what we call a double eagle or a bear front because of the 85 bears. But they're going to put five down guys, which now creates one-on-one -on -one matchups up front, which frees up your linebackers to try and run the ball. And in pass pro, it gets you one-on-one. -on -one. Again, with a, much, with a more talented team, this could be a real problem. But let's take a look at how they play up front. They're going to try and penetrate up front, and they're going to try and get in the backfield and let their linebackers run downhill and make some plays. So Penn State's got to be able to get their linemen up to the next level and get those things. Now, down here inside the 10-yard line, which I expect Penn State will be often and early, early and often, uh, they're going to play a zone here. They're going to play three over two here, three over two here. So one of the things that is good is a good hard play action to get this guy to bite, which should get Hamler or Fryermuth into the end zone. Let's take a look at how this plays out on film uh, against Ohio State again. Now here Ohio State's just going to run the ball. 
But again, they're going to commit to the run and try and play coverage as a second. This player. isn't a team that Penn State has blown off the field in the last couple right. of years. And I think offensively versus their defense, if you're not sharp, I mean, you still yep. have to execute. And that's, yep. I think that's really where the danger comes in when you don't look at opponent and you say, okay, well, it's just Rutgers. You still need to do what you need to do, or they have right. enough capabilities to at least slow you down. Yeah, I mean, we can be flipping about it, but Penn State better not about it. Right. But let's take a look at the yep. Big Ten East, because again, this shows you uh, how 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 much farther behind the bottom three in the Big Ten East versus the other three that Penn State plays. Look at the record against Rutgers, Indiana, and Maryland versus the other guys. This is a game that Penn State should win and will win and unless they're sloppy. Now, let's take a look at what Rutgers going to try to do offensively. Their quarterback is a good, efficient runner, and don't discount that. Here, they're going to fake the ball here, get these linebackers running this way, and bring the guard and tackle around and give him a chance to run the football. Let's take a look at this on film here. Again, to get the linebackers to play, especially a team that pl whose linebackers play aggressively the ball as Penn State's do, much like Ohio State. Uh, you get those guys with some misdirection and those kind of things. That creates some ability for him to run. Now, he is mobile. They've had trouble throwing from the pocket. He's about a 52, 53 percent completion guy. Not very efficient. So one of the things he'll do, as we've seen the last couple of weeks against Penn State, Move the pocket. Moves the pocket does two things. It helps you with the pass rush, but it also simplifies his read. Here you just have a clear out and an out route by Bo Melton in the slot, who's an effective receiver. They block. So let's take a look at this on film here. Again, they're going to block back, cut the end with the, with the running back. He gets outside, and he throws the ball, moves the chains. So that's the second thing they're going to try to do. Finally, they, one of the things they do is they get the tailback right behind the quarterback, which now gives them the ability to choice their run and their read either way, and it doesn't allow Penn State to key in when the back is offset one way or the other. So here they're going to come up and choice the run. They're going to make him the read. They're going to pull the backside guy here, put the line, uh, the running back up on the linebacker, and now this defensive end is going to see a lot of things in front of him and then have to read this and, and also play the quarterback, and now the running back can go either way and take a look at how this unplay, unfolds on the film. Again, that defensive end's looking. He doesn't know where to go. Next thing you know, the back's splitting out the backside. So if Penn State does not pay attention to details, they come out a little flat, could be a long afternoon. Not a long afternoon, but a long first half of it. And I mentioned some guys are in the transfer portal. I have to mention Sitkowski. I mean, I have to say that name because yeah. I'm Sitkowski. I have to yes. at least say Sitkowski. So you got 20 seconds to fit, fix Rutgers' problems. Where do they even begin? Well, I think they're going to have to try and hope they get some turnovers, make Penn State throw the football more than they maybe want to. And other than that, could be a long afternoon. And then off the field, we don't have enough time to talk about how no, they No, I think things. they've got to commit to really being put in the kind of resources they need to, to be a Big Ten team. All right, we'll wrap up the Blue Light Tailgate after this. Well, the infamous G Block in our hour-long program is now the D Block because we get to finish things off. We're going to have some picks coming up. We're going to talk about the keys of the game. We're also going to hear from Garrett Taylor, who has been with the program now a long time. He's seen a lot of changes, and he really likes the direction it's going. You know, I was here when the program was still kind of, you know, transitioning. You know, we had some guys who were bought in, some guys who weren't. Um, but it's kind of been cool to see, you know, throughout the years, you know, how that's changed and you know, how everyone, you know, has been bought into Franklin's process and, you know, his, you know, keys to success and it's, it's worked. Um, so it's been, it's been cool to see. It's hard to argue with the results of the victories, good bowl games. Um, look, this is good. This is what you want to see. You want to see guys buy in and, and that's part of the development of a program and what you want to instill when, when you're the coaching staff. Yeah, and I think Garrett Terrell was a great representative of Penn State University. I mean, and the way he plays and the way he conducts himself, I mean, that's a guy you're proud to have wear a uniform. And it's not just Taylor, it's this whole class, really, because they've been through the ups and the downs of this program, but this senior class has been a huge contribution. Three out of four seasons, ten wins, assuming they do beat Rutgers, yep. and that's, that's huge. Yeah. Well, that's not that leap. That's not that big of a leap on the, on the Rutgers victory. <laughs> but they still got to take care of business. Yes. yes, they've they've done their job. Okay, our job is to now give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So Josh gets to sit in, and somehow he's the good one right away. 
Well, I got to start off the good with a shout out to my alma mater, Lafayette, beating Lehigh in the most important rivalry in college football, the <laughs> oldest rivalry in college football, for the first time since I've graduated. Got to love to see that. Another thing I love to see, Charlotte 49ers, been in FBS football for 10 years. They're at bowl eligible for the first time under a first year FBS coach. That's pretty cool. Getting the job done. All right, I go to the bad and it's, it's Nick Saban, not his coaching. His coaching's phenomenal. It's the politicking involved. You're Alabama. You do not need to cater to the committee and tell them that your game coming up against Auburn is against the most talented team you faced uh, a little while after you just lost to LSU. So Nick, calm down. Everybody knows how good Alabama is. Let's see if Mac Jones can get the job done. And I got the ugly, which uh, is Miami losing to FIU. I mean, put down the turnover chain, start winning some games, <laughs> just focus on what counts. And what counts now is our Center Daily Times picks as we're going to give you a good slate of games coming up. And Brittany has got our first pick. It's Oklahoma and Oklahoma wait, State. Wait, wait, back up. I was... Everybody was 4-0. Oh. What? Not yep. me. Look well, at I'm that. still in front, fellas. Brittany, what you got? <laughs> Guys, I'm excited to finally be able to throw my hat in the ring this season. I'm going to go with Oklahoma winning the Bedlam game because they've won the past four in the series, and Jalen Hurts is looking like a true Heisman candidate. Now, Josh, who are you picking in the Iron Bowl? See, I want to pick Auburn here with Alabama doesn't have Tua, but I just don't think Auburn's got enough to beat him. Not a big fan of Bo Nix. I don't think he's, he's quite there yet. Well, I got Wisconsin at Minnesota, and I just want the Gophers to win, so I'm picking them. I got the rivalry. I'm going with Michigan. I think Penn State took a little wind out of the sails of Ohio State. Josh Field, Justin Fields might be a little nicked up. We're going to go with Michigan with the upset. Okay, our Blaze Alexander keys to the game. Josh, you go first. Uh, I think it's just going to be to be efficient because this should be an easy game in the tune-up for bowl season. But last year, 3.6 yards of carry, 45% completion percentage from McSorley. An efficient game could lead to an easy one. I think you got to get started and get going, get the crowd into it, get and Clifford if he starts. Have them play well early. Respect your opponent. Your favorite to beat Rutgers. Show up. Get the job done. Concentrate. Everybody do their job, and they'll take care of business. We took care of business today without Steve Jones. We missed you, Steve. For all the guys here no, we set, and for Brittany, we missed him. We'll see you next time on the Blue White Tailgate.